Hey there, fellas. Okay, so in today's episode, this here car is going to be assuming guinea pig status. Let me just quickly fill you in on the details of what we're about to do. So I'm sure you guys all own a bunch of different cars, and I'm pretty sure you've noticed that some cars have more steering angle than others, meaning that some vehicles have a wider turning circle, some need less space to flip around, and so on. As for the classic rear-wheel drive Ladas, they don't have what you'd call a wide steering angle. Take a close look at the picture that just came up on your screens. Now these guys, they've gone all out with the steering angle. And so now we're looking to take a Lada and get the steering angle as close as we possibly can to 90 degrees. One more thing to keep in mind is that the car on that picture is up in the air. And it's no surprise that when you load up the suspension, the steering angle... I'm sure a lot of you have encountered that from personal experience. When you lower a car with the wheels turned all the way, once you start compressing the dampers, the wheels start to straighten out a bit. That's just how a suspension works. Right, let's bring that steering angle as close as we can to 90 degrees, shall we? Extreme steering angle close to 90 degrees. Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Right, fellas, here's what the front suspension looks like. Double wishbones, a hub, nothing overly complicated. A steering knuckle. The thing is, we're looking to achieve maximum steering angle. And what's keeping us from doing that is actually the control arms. These are pretty wide, you've got a spring sitting in the middle. I don't see the point in modifying the arm itself. Another issue is that you've either got the wheel lodging itself into the control arm, or the steering knuckle is getting in the way. So where does that bring us exactly? The hub, together with the knuckles and all of that other stuff, will have to be spaced a bit further away from the control arms. All right, here's where we're at. We're still running the factory control arms. We didn't swap anything out. 
These are the OEM lot of wishbones. That said, we did slightly modify the suspension. We hacked up the hub, as you can see, in order to extend it by about 5 centimeters. That allowed us to bring the wheel out a bit, as in we are running a wider track. The reasoning behind doing that was basically we needed the wheel to keep turning without hitting the control arm. Another thing people tend to do is remove the steering knuckle, hack it up and shorten it in order to increase the steering angle. That's how a bunch of lot owners do it. Our recipe is slightly different. We cut the steering knuckle off altogether and then we welded it we welded it to the bottom part of this here hub. That allowed us to increase the steering angle by a significant margin. Also, you can tell by looking at the wheels that we've got a bit more caster. So yeah, it's a much different story compared to what you get on a bone stock Lada. The steering angle isn't quite as wide with the car up in the air, though. Once we load the suspension up a bit, even at just a quick glance, you'll see a noticeable increase in the steering angle. As for the current situation, so that there is as far as the wheels can go. Though I do have to say, we've already got about double the angle. Further increasing the steering angle would involve widening the track even more, by a crazy margin. So far this is looking... I did say we were looking to achieve close to 90 degrees, but this is as far as it'll let us go. The biggest issue, of course, being the steering mechanism itself. In stock form, the lot of steering mechanism is a serious limiting factor when it comes to getting a wider steering angle. So with this kind of steering angle, yeah, the car does become somewhat more maneuverable, but you're really gonna need the appropriate skills, I mean, if you're navigating a corner and you start to turn in while being too close to a certain object, you can easily make contact with the side of your car. Keep that in mind. I'd actually like to hear from anybody who's been through that. Okay, let's say you're parked somewhere and you know full well that you've got some mad steering angle. You start turning the wheels, but you forget to check the tire pressures, you smash the gas, you've got some good grip assuming this is happening in the summer, and as a result the tires peel off from the rims. I've seen that happen. So now I'm wondering if any of you guys have been there. Let me know in the comments. Given the space we got in here, no lot would ever be able to make that turn. But I'm gonna give it a try in this modified example. Exactly as I predicted. <laughs> Holy cow! That's just... It just made the turn. We actually have another car which we've done a bunch of experiments on. We've featured it quite a few times. I'm of course referring to our BMW 3 Series. Here it is, fellas. Our BMW, which is completely bone stock. We've already got a driver in there. Turn the wheel for me. So now we've got the wheels turning left, right? And that's it. There you have the stock steering angle given this suspension setup. Let's try the other way. We've got the wheels turning. Oh man, that is some resistance. Is this really as much angle as they give you? How are you supposed to even drive the damn thing? This is going to be much simpler, given that it only has a strut and one control arm, a steering knuckle and that's pretty much it. There are a few things that might get in the way, but we'll take it all apart, hack it, weld it back up. All right, let's get to it.
All right, guys, right here we're looking at a simple McPherson strut suspension, nothing fancy. So in order to get some additional steering angle happening, we had to extend the lower control arms. We added just as much length as we did on that first car, which is about maybe six centimeters, give or take. The reason for doing that is that the wheel touches the frame rail at some point. Now it's placed a bit further. As for the steering knuckle, now it's pretty much integrated with the hub and the strut. Anyway, we did have to relocate it, placing it a bit closer to the center. We've also extended the tie rod ends, and now we've got some healthy steering angle. We did our very best to achieve 90 degrees, but right now the car is sitting on a hoist, with the suspension dangling up in the air. And it might seem as if we've got plenty of room between the wheel and the frame rail, but under load it is going to be super close. Okay, let's bring it down and see what's up. Right, so the car is on the ground, suspension all loaded up. Yeah, there's plenty of weight pushing down onto the suspension. And check out the steering angle we've got here. Give it some more maybe, about 5 mil? No, that's it? Keep going, brother. Okay, so now you can see that we've got plenty of angle going the other way. I'd say we are really close to 90 degrees. But just like I said, now the frame rail is seriously getting in the way. Meaning we have to bring the wheel out even further. And that would involve even more extending of the control arms. And we're already sitting on the limit. There's really not that much more we can do here. And here's another thing. Turn them the other way, will ya? Since we've got rack and pinion steering in this thing, as opposed to the recirculating ball-type mechanism in that Lada, here the wheel is guaranteed to not get jammed. With the parallelogram, the steering wheel does tend to stick a bit at extreme angles. And in some cases, you might not be able to get it to return straight off the bat. My point, of course, is that steering racks are way more manageable. Maybe we should try... Okay, so last time I drove that way. How about you try making it into that space? We've got about 7 meters worth of distance between the pillars. Meanwhile, the car is roughly... Let's call it 4.5 meters long. Are we doing this? Let's have a look. And he's off. The car is very hesitant to move. We've got a very dramatic steering angle going. And the wheels... Oh my! So yeah, the wheels... are creating some resistance and not really letting the car move. Go ahead! And that's exactly what I was talking about. If you're running low tire pressure, you could easily detach the tires from the wheels if you were to step on it. No problem at all. Oh wow, that actually worked? There you go. All he had to do was make a slight right turn, and he made that U-turn with flying colors. We did it. So all in all this went quite well. Admittedly, the suspension geometry on that lot it didn't allow us to get a steering angle of... I mean, we knew in advance that we wouldn't see 90 degrees no matter what we did. That would require doing a major overhaul. That said, we did get some solid results, even on that Lada. And it was much easier to get the job done on this BMW. It took less time, though I wouldn't say the steering angle increase was that drastic, but I still think we were able to squeeze a couple of more degrees out of it, due to there being a steering rack and a suspension with just the lower control arm. There's really not too much to work around. You extend and shorten a few things, and you're good. It's all very simple. So yeah, fellas, increasing the steering angle is something you can do to pretty much any car. But I'll repeat myself and urge you guys to stick to the racetrack. Don't go driving around on public roads with these kinds of mods. And that's all I have for you. We've established that this is all very much doable. Anyway, watch us, subscribe, send in those comments and suggestions, give us a big thumbs up.